And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at King Me, which sounds like it's been the name of a game before, I guess. It's something that's said all the time in checkers. If you get your checker to the other side of the board, you say King Me, they flip it over, now can come back the other way. In that game, checkers, which I don't play anymore, but I know a lot of people know what it is because they play it at Cracker Barrel. Anyway, King Me is a variant on checkers of some degree of sorts, but also has area control involved with it. It's a two-player game that's very different than checkers in many ways. Here's how. At the beginning of the game, the checkers are set up like this. There's spots on the board to show you where each of the checkers go. We got black first, red. One player is chosen to go first. That person moves one checker. Then the next player moves two, and you go back and forth moving two checkers. When it's your turn, you can move a checkered forward. That's called marching into a space diagonally. Or you can jump. When you jump, you can jump over your own checkers, other people's checkers, or over these fixed checkers that are on the board. So my first turn I could go one, two, and jump to that spot there on the board. If you jump over your opponent's checker, it's captured and will be placed in front of you for end game scoring. After you're done with moving your checkers and such, you'll flip over the top card here. If there's already a card there, which there will be after a while, these cards will continue to slide down. And as they slide down, eventually, on turn six, after a player moves, this card resolves. So this one here moves the river one space. Any checker who's on the river, on either river, will move forward one space. So most of the cards will move the river one space. But there's also area control cards. This is for the boneyard. The boneyard is this area right here, and whoever has more checkers in the boneyard is going to take this card, which is worth 10 points. The Red Pine Forest is another one here that's in this setup, and this one here will score 5 points if Red controls it, and 20 points if Black does, which makes sense because it would be much harder for Black to control that area. If a player ends their checker in one of two spots next to these kings, you'll flip it over and snap the king on the back. This checker is now a king, and it can be moved twice on a turn rather than normally where each player can only move a checker once. Kings also, when you, this is the uh, beast king, Kings also count as two checkers for area control in different regions on the board. So this guy counts as two checkers in the boneyard and the pyramid area and the red forest, actually. And then the Extreme King, Dream King, and, and uh, Hidden King will count as two checkers there. Also, if you control a king at the end of the game, that's worth 10 points. You can take control of a king by jumping over it. That checker is removed, and now you are that king. This will continue until this entire deck is run through. I should mention that this deck has different symbols on the cards. You shuffle each of those decks and you put them on top of each other in any order, which will cause the different regions that score to come out somewhat randomly, but at least they'll be spread out throughout the deck. When the glass card is resolved, the game is over. You will score points for each checker that you've jumped. You'll score points for each area control card that you have taken over the course of the game. And you'll score points for each crown that you control. Whoever has the most points is the winner. The cards themselves are lots, you know, they're pretty small, but I mean, they are pretty easy to see. Volcanic Ridge, the different regions on the board are pretty easily distinct from each other. However, I will say that the board itself, I feel, is super busy. It is difficult necessarily to see everything that's on the board, and as you're moving things into spaces, there are light and dark spaces, so if a checker stays in a light space, it is essentially going to stay on light space except in a river. A river will move you onto the space of the other side. But it's, I don't know, I just felt that the board was just very busy to look at. The checkers themselves, they're smaller than a normal size checker, but you can, I do like how when you flip it over, you can snap the crown in, and they do look cool moving the crowns around on them. So, and then these tiles are good quality tiles. The, the component quality here is okay. Okay, so here's the thing. Other, even though the, the board is a little bit, like I said, it's too, a little bit vibrant to look at too much stuff going on, it's also too big. And that's the biggest problem with King Me is that it's really not checkers, it's about area control, and yet the area control is too difficult. 
this game has all these areas you need to control and you're not really sure when they're going to come up. Sure, I guess you could memorize the back of every deck and know exactly when a card is going to pop out and okay, well this one hasn't come up yet, it's going to come up on the sword side. That, that, that seems like too much work to put into a game that is essentially super checkers but not really. See, at the beginning, I was like, oh, wow, the checkers, we're going to be jumping them all over the board. You can jump some far with these stationary checkers, and there's these rivers moving things around. It's the only way to get a checker to move from the dark side to the light side. Uh, it sounds like the checkers are using the force. But, you know, the, the river moves them around, but it's not that exciting. I thought it would be like maybe Chinese checkers, right? Go boom, 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 boom. You, maybe you can do a move like that maybe once or twice over the game, but your opponent's usually going to not let, allow you to set yourself up like that. They'll jump you or they'll stay out of your way. And so there's not that tension. The board's too big, too wide open. And that area control and jumping people and even the kings. The kings aren't that interesting. They're plus two in three areas on the board. Why didn't they just make the kings plus two all the time? Then I would have fought for him a lot more because you'd get a king and be like, wow, he's plus two in these three areas, but two of them have already scored. Well, woohoo. So I wanted to like this, but it felt too thinky and yet too light at the same time. The river is constantly moving. That's neat, but it doesn't really affect the game that much. You could sit there and go, okay, the river's going to move the next four turns. If I put my piece there, da, 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 then I can jump maybe. At that point, you're putting too much effort into something while your opponent could move a whole bunch of pieces in the meantime. I really wanted to like this one because it looked really neat. But this is one of those times where I like things that are wide and spread out. And this wide and spread out makes it suffer. That checker 64 square board makes it tight and fun. This it was too spread out. You can't even get to You'd see an area come up and you're like, well, I can't even get over there. So I guess it's yours. I can't even stop you from it. So, I like checkers as a whole, but the air control thing here is a stronger aspect and it's not good enough because you need to use the weaker checkers aspect to get to it. Yeah, this one's a pass for me. All right. Dice Tower Judgment, not enough checkers. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.